Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Sid's Little Corner of the Internet. We've got another Transformers review coming your way. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series 27 Clunker Bumblebee and 28 Barricade 2-Pack. So as we always do, let's go ahead and take a look at that packaging first, and we'll bring it in for the close-up. So right there, you have Bumblebee, you have Bumblebee, you have Bumblebee. It's Clunker Bumblebee. It's Barricade. No Barricade on the front. You have your artwork on the side, and you do have a Barricade down there. Hello. On the back, you have your product shots. You have Clunker Bumblebee. It is big screen inspired. It must be true because it says so on the box. And you have the barricade. It's the police chase. And parents? Okay, good to know. Uh, it is officially the Bumblebee Camaro is officially licensed by General Motors. The barricade Saline Mustang is officially licensed by Ford and by Saline. And the officially licensed sad baby makes an appearance as well over here on the side you've got a little bit of an autobot symbol another little tiny bumblebee down there and then just that corner picture that finishes everything up up top you have takara tomei clunker bumblebee barricade studio series transformers on the bottom you have manufacturing information so that is it for the packaging on the outside at least let's go ahead and see what came inside that box all right, guys, so behold everything that came in that box. And of course, as we always do, we will start with a little sheet of warnings. Good to know they're there. You do get your instructions so you can transform these fellers properly. And then we'll start with Bumblebee's accessory here. He does get his arm cannon. And oh no, arm cannon down. Let's try that again. And it is nicely painted with a silver. You do have a couple little bits of yellow there where you can see the natural molded color. But overall, I think that's a pretty good looking uh, silver and a big old arm cannon for that little guy. And we'll see it later, but he just attaches to his arm via that little port right there. And as far as barricade goes, he gets his big spinning tire wheel of death and murder right there. So. There you go. It is just soft rubber, so these are easily bent, and it's easily spun. So there you go. Not a lot of detail on there. It's just black. That's a little bit of the car fender, or supposed to be. Yeah, there you go. So that is it as far as the accessories that come with these figures, except for if you want to call the backdrop an accessory, you do get this backdrop. And this is the scene from the 2007 movie where we see Bumblebee and Barricade fight for the first time and uh, Michaela and Sam are hiding behind a hill and watching it in awe and amazement as they watch these huge alien robots fight it out. So, but there you go. So that is it for everything that came in the box except for these two guys. So what we'll do is we'll get this out of here and we will start with Bumblebee and we'll take a look at his details and articulation. All right, so here we have our little yellow superhero himself the Studio Series Clunker Bumblebee. So let's bring him in for his close-up and get a look at all those nice details. So you do have that Bumblebee head sculpt as we saw him in the first movie. Love it or hate it, there it is. And you come down here, you do have tons of great molded in detail in this figure. The paint apps are a little sparse, but the detail is there and uh, looks really good for the most part. So you do have those headlights that are painted in there and of course you got that nice silver bumper you get that grill right there and then you come down here and you can see all that detail that's built into those components right there come down here to those molded black legs it's busy but for the most part there's not a lot going on and then you get those iconic bumblebee shins and then down here at the feet you do get some nicely painted applications I think it makes it pop it would have benefited I think from some paint in this area but this is just a deluxe class figure and then everything kind of starts to fall apart right here it's just it is what it is and you have those iconic bumblebee arms that we're so used to seeing now from the Bayverse films if you lift those arms up you do see that he gets a little skinny underneath there and then back here you do get a little bit of detail right here, and then of course the, the wings themselves. You come around to the back, and it's pretty much just a lot of car. 
Now it's worth noting that you know what they've done back here they have added a little bit of detail just to break up some of the monotony right here so in these parts right here they added a little bit and then down here at the bottom you just get a whole lot of car parts but overall the overall aesthetic of this figure I think is is pretty good I think that for the most part he looks the part uh, captures the way that Bumblebee looked in the movie so no real complaints about the way he looks the majority of my gripes on this guy really uh, come down to looseness but all the looseness aside the look of the figure is nice now as far as articulation goes you do get that head it can do a little bit of down it can do a little bit of up you don't really get much side to side and you can turn that all the way around if you choose to do so shoulders you can bring them up that far you can go all the way around if you choose to do so just be wary of the wings you get right at 90 on the elbow and you get bicep rotation that can go all the way around you do get waist rotation on this figure and as far as the hips if you move these pieces just out of your way just to make sure they don't interfere with anything you can get about that far and here's an example of what I was talking about this that that just shouldn't happen but it is and kind of the same thing here you kind of loose on that I'm not just disappointed overall but splits you get about that far and he can kick forward that far and he can kick backward that far before he starts running into his his self and as far as the thighs go you do get a little bit at the ball joint but you also get a separate rotation joint right here so you can move those legs how you deem fit at the knees you get maybe just under 90 before he starts running into all of his own pieces and then down here at the feet you can move the feet forward that far back that far as far as ankle tilt goes this was just it's kind of a mind boggler to me you don't get any inward ankle tilt it it's out here which doesn't really help when you want to give him a wide stance you can't really do much and besides he's so loose it's not like he's going to stand for me anyway uh, not to try to make this a, just a complaint session but th this guy's a, a pain in the butt to pose anyway but yeah that's it for the articulation on bumblebee so let's go ahead and talk about his one and only accessory which is his big hand cannon here or arm cannon now the way you do this is you take this arm and just give it a pull and then you're left with this peg and you do you have that port right in there so you just line these two up and this can be a bit of a pain too because this is loose and this pops off real easy these are two these are on just two friction pins and they pop off really easily so I'll do my best here to get it on without cursing so you line it up and the nice thing is unlike the buzzworthy bumblebee uh, from the two pack with dropkick this one this joint is nice and tight so this isn't going to come off you can actually pick him up and shake him by this and he's not going to drop that hand cannon so there you have bumblebee with his one and only accessory on and i think for the most part it looks pretty good so yeah um uh, overall i like the looks of the figure i like the accessory that he comes with i absolutely cannot stand the looseness of this guy I, he's just he's such a pain to pose um, but when we get him into car mode, you'll, you'll see there's a lot of redemption there because that car mode is absolutely gorgeous. So that's more than likely the way I will be displaying him on my shelf. So let's go ahead and move him out of the way and we will bring in Mr. Barricade. All right, guys. So here we have Barricade and we will bring him in for his close up and look at his details. And as I do, I will be adjusting his chest because that got a little bit out of the way or out of whack, but there we go that face sculpt is superb on this figure I mean he's got an ugly face but what they've done here with the paint apps on him th this definitely is far better than what we saw on any of the previous figures from the Bayverse movies 
So yeah, the, the, the silver and the gold and the blue here, uh, those accents, I think they just look really, really well done. And he has those little beady red eyes. So easily my favorite part of this figure is that head sculpt. I think it looks really good. And you come down here to that grill, and I like what they've done here as far as the transformation to kind of make this look deformed. There, like there was a level of deformation there in the, in the transformation that gives him a bit more of an alien look. Uh, not a lot of paint apps going on anywhere else on the body other than the outsides, the, the car area. So uh, trying to get a little bit of contrast here so you can see some of that molded in detail because he does have a lot of molded in detail going on, which is nice. And then you come down here to the legs. And he has this interesting uh, double joint setup going on down here, so you can do a few things with that, and we'll see that in the articulation here in a second. And you do get those nicely painted silver tops of his feet, the metatarsal area, if you will. And if you come down here, take a look at the side here. He does have those little, I don't know, <laughs> those little horns sticking up, which I think are a nice touch. And, uh, you know, even really for the back of the car here, they've tucked it away as best they can. So I think that looks overall overall pretty good as well. You can't really get this guy's arms out of the way. So kind of give him a little peek back here so you can take a look. Uh, he does clean up pretty well, this backpack. You can move it around in some different areas. But uh, for the most part, I think he, he cleans up overall pretty good. As far as the arms go... There's not a lot going on in here. You've just got a lot of folded in car parts, uh, big hollow area right there. But he does have those big old fingers, and they are articulated. So you do have that. You can grab some stuff if you want. And he does have a little bit of molded in detail down here in this area. I, I like these little things coming out of his collar right here. That So in the original figure that came out for the 2007 movie, these were the windows and they were kind of sticking up like little wings but I, I like the look of this better for sure and you look on the outside this is just basically the side of a police car there you go and I did notice on this that nowhere on this figure does it say to punish and enslave so I thought that was an interesting choice I don't know what's going on there if that was a, a conscious decision by Hasbro and Takar to not put that on to potentially not offend people or what the deal was but um it is kind of glaring because whenever people think of barricade, that's what they think of, or at least I do. But anyway, here on the back, you can see, like I said, he does clean up for the most part fairly well. Yeah, you, you got the big rear end of the car hanging off the backs of his calves, but we've seen this on other figures. And in this one, it's not too intrusive, especially considering that it's black. It blends in a little bit better. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the overall look of this figure, I think, is pretty good for a studio series. I think he comes together uh, quite nicely uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. Now, I do have my gripes as far as articulation goes, which we'll get into now. But aesthetically, yeah, I think he looks pretty good. Now, articulation-wise, his head will do a little bit of a swivel. It will go up. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that on the neck. It will go up a little bit. It will go down a little bit. And then if you want to, it's transformation, but you can make him look way up and tuck him away like, what's going on so you can do that if you choose to and he has nothing at the waist oh why am i going down to the waist i gotta go to the arms anyway so at the shoulders you can bring the shoulders up that far before he starts running into stuff now he does have more motion in the shoulders you just can't do much right here because he starts banging into himself why are you hitting yourself why are you hitting yourself so uh, just be aware of that and you can take the arms all the way around if you choose to do so. And so, uh, let me see if I can give you a good view here. You can get over 90 on those arms, which is much appreciated. I really like that. But you don't get any bicep rotation. So the only thing that you get is in this... Oh, you do get bicep rotation. I'm sorry. I've just never pushed him far enough to get it. So, my mistake. You do get bicep rotation. There you go. We learned something together. And down here at the hands, you're not going to get a whole lot. Just that right there. I forgot to do the hands on Bumblebee. The, the only thing Bumblebee's hands do are fold in for transformation. So, gosh, I've missed two things in this review. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, we've come down here. We already talked about the waist. You can't do anything with the waist. And you can't do much with those hips. This is really disappointing. 
So n not like your figures typically need a wide stance, but gosh, that's that's hardly anything. So uh, anyway, he will kick forward, I'm trying to get those big old gorilla arms out of the way. He doesn't kick forward very far. He'll kick forward about right there. That's all you're going to get. And he will only kick backward that far before he runs into himself. So severely limited in his upper articulation for his legs. And the only rotation you get is just at that ball joint. So you're not going to get a whole lot as far as leg posing on this guy. Now with the double joints here, you can do a few things. Obviously, I mean, you can get one heck of a knee bend out of there if you get everything moved correctly so you can get a good 90 maybe a little bit more you can give him the starscream chicken leg kind of bend if you want to do that now this is uh, you know due to transformation but you could do something like that if you want to as well or you could just straighten them completely out to give him a little bit more height so your choice down here at the feet you do not get any ankle tilt at all there's nothing there but you do you can bring the feet back that far and you can bring them forward that far. Again, primarily due to transformation, but it's there if you want to use it. So aesthetically, yeah, this guy's, uh, this guy's got it going on. Articulation-wise, not the biggest fan of him. Uh, so you're not going to get a whole lot of dynamic poses. Now, as far as his accessory goes, you do have the big spinning wheel tire of death and murder and destruction. So the only thing you're really going to do, it doesn't matter, left hand, right hand, squeeze that hand together, and you're going to plug it in. And this is supposed to simulate the extension of his arm whenever he was using this weapon in the movie, and you can give it a good spin. So there you go. That is it for the details and articulation on Barricade and his accessories. So. What we'll do now, I'm not going to do transformation in this review, much like the other Buzzworthy Bumblebee review I did for the last two pack. These are reissues of Studio Series uh, figures, so I'm not going to waste time doing a transformation on these guys. Besides, the transformation's pretty simple. So we're just going to jump right in. I'm going to change these guys over to car mode, and we'll jump right in, and we'll take a look at the, the car details and talk about the weapon storage and how they look in the car mode, which, like I say, is really, in my opinion, really where Bumblebee shines. I mean, he looks great, too. But I have a gripe with him, and you'll you'll see it in car mode, but, but Bumblebee absolutely shines in car mode. So let's go ahead and get these guys into their car mode so we can take a look. All right, guys, so here we have Bumblebee and Barricade in their vehicle modes. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start with Barricade and take a look at those details. And the reason I chose starting with Barricade is just uh, my gripe with this vehicle. Uh, as you can see here in the front, this little rubber brush guard, it it won't stay. So it's lined up. It fits in the slot where it's supposed to go, but it simply won't stay. So I'm a little disappointed in that. I think overall the, the vehicle mode looks great. I just wish that that brush guard would stay. And, uh, you know, it may take, you know, getting a hair dryer and warming this rubber up and trying to mold that back into its natural resting position. I can't tell you if I did this in transformation or if it came out of the box that way. I just know that it's, uh, you know, kind of disappointing. Overall, the look of the car looks great, but that is just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But let's go ahead and look at those details. And we'll start up here with the front. So other than that brush guard, I think the front here is done very well. You do have a couple of little paint accents right there in the front for those fog lights, maybe for the police lights. And then coming over here to the side, the one thing that I do appreciate on both of these vehicles is the fact that we don't have mushroom pegs. So we can see the full attention to detail on the wheel. And then you do have that little police logo right there. And coming down here to the side, you have that nine or that six four three, and then the emergency nine one one there in the back. And speaking of the back, it is licensed by Ford. It is oops, it is licensed by Celine. So this is a Celine Mustang. You can see right there. 
And you do have those tail lights decked out, which is nice. Coming back over here to this side, so nothing different than what we saw on the passenger side. And up top, you do have 643, and you have police. You do, of course, have all the Mustang details that you would expect to see from an officially licensed vehicle as well. So, and even this little light bar, I don't think that's too bad. I think they did a pretty good job there with that. So, down under, yeah, there's... It, I mean, there's robot kibble under there, but there's nothing particularly obvious. I think it came out looking as good as can be expected. And, you know, as far as that goes, I, I think it's a pretty good looking car mode. Now for Bumblebee, out of the two, this is easily my favorite. I love what they've done here with this vehicle mode. And, uh, you know, much like Barricade, this is officially licensed by Chevrolet or by General Motors. So we do have those expectations where <laughs> this should look like a Camaro, right? So there we have up in the front, we have that nice grill and that nice painted bumper and those headlights in there. Then coming over to the side, you do have those good looking wheels and tires and they've even gone so far as to use different wheels and tires for the front and the back, which is good. I think that looks nice. And you have all your weathered uh, clunker paint apps, if you will. And here in the back, uh, even even this, I mean, these are his shins. Even this doesn't look that bad. You can almost squint and imagine those as being, you know, maybe uh, some exhaust tips or maybe a wheelie bar, something like that back there. So I, I don't I don't think this detracts. And then over here on the side, you have more weathering. And then up top, you do have that big old rust spot. They're going to need to pay some attention to that before that gets too bad. And down here at the bottom, you do have your typical bumblebee visible head syndrome. But everything else comes together pretty good down there. And I think for the most part, this vehicle mode came together. It's very well done. And uh, I appreciate all the work that they put into it, particularly for the vehicle mode. Now, both of these vehicles do have weapon storage. So for the weapon that came with bumblebee, this is, <laughs> this is obnoxious but it's there if you want to use it. So you can take the square peg and that round peg and put it in the square slot and the round slot and plug it in right there. And then you've got a big old gun hanging off the back of Bumblebee. Hey, it's weapon storage. So if you have him in this mode, you're, you're not gonna lose it. Now, as far as barricade goes, you do have his big old spinning wheel of death. And you can just take that and plug it in right in this slot right there. Give that a press and that will fit in just like that. And there you go. Now he is rolling. It would roll better if this brush guard wasn't in the way. Or he is spinning, sorry, not rolling. He's, but he is rolling. He's rolling and spinning the giant wheel of death. So there you go. Those are both of the vehicle modes. Like I said, I think they look great. The vehicle modes here are very faithful and accurate so no real complaints in vehicle mode at all except for that brush guard on barricade other than that they look good so let's go ahead and bring in some comparisons and see how these guys stack up all right guys first comparison we have is bumblebee in his earth mode from the netflix war for cybertron trilogy so you can take a look how the bumblebee camaro looks next to the bumblebee volkswagen beetle Next comparison is the Barricade, as we saw him in the Netflix War for Cybertron trilogy in his Siege mode. Next up is the Deluxe Class Bumblebee from the Transformers of the Last Night Bayverse movie. And here is the Deluxe Class version of Barricade as he was seen in the Transformers Last Night Bayverse movie. And for our last two comparisons, we're going to bring in the original figures that were released for the 2007 uh, Bayverse Transformers movie. So the first one up is the Bumblebee figure that was released for that movie. And finally, for that last comparison, here we have the Barricade figure that was released for the 2007 Bayverse movie. 
and just because I thought it looked cool, here you go. Here's a double comparison with both of those figures from the 2007 movie. All right, so let's go ahead and get into those robot mode comparisons. All right, guys, so for our first robot mode comparison, here we see the Bumblebee and Barricade next to Bumblebee from the Netflix Earthrise trilogy. Next, we have Barricade as we saw him in the Siege chapter of the Netflix War for Cybertron trilogy. Here we have the Deluxe Class Bumblebee figure as we saw him in Transformers The Last Night Bayverse movie. And something real quick to note, uh, these two right here are actually mold mates. So the transformation is the same on both of these. They've just made changes to you know, make the difference between the clunker Camaro and the modern Camaro. But transformation is the same on both of these guys. So job well done on making enough changes to actually make them look different. But yeah, essentially the same figure. Next up, we have Barricade, the deluxe class figure, as we saw him in the last night Bayverse movie. And just like we saw in car mode, the last two comparisons that I'm going to show you are the original figures that premiered from the 2007 Transformers movie. So this is, of course, the Bumblebee figure that we got in 2007 for that movie. And here we see the barricade figure from the 2007 movie. And just for fun, here we have both the Bumblebee and the Barricade next to the Bumblebee and the Barricade. There you go. All right, guys, that's it for comparisons. Let's go ahead and get into those final thoughts. All right, guys, so here are my final thoughts on this uh, Transformers Buzzworthy Bumblebee Barricade Bumblebee 2 pack. Uh, this is kind of a mixed bag. So right off the bat, you know, I can tell you that uh, I didn't have either one of these Studio Series figures. So it was nice for me to be able to pick this up and put these into my collection. But in doing so, I'm reminded why I was reluctant to put them in my collection in the first place. I have to say that I'm not the biggest fan of these designs. You know, they're, um, they feel a little bit phoned in. Don't get me wrong, I think they look fantastic in their vehicle modes. Both of them do. Uh, particularly the Bumblebee. I mean, they, they've just captured the essence of that clunker Bumblebee in, in his vehicle mode. But in the bot modes, I kind of feel like these guys fall apart. Uh, I, I mean, that literally and figuratively, you know, there are the, 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 the plague that seems to be for Studio Series right now, the plague of the loose joints, using ball joints in the hips. I'm sorry, it's a bad idea. It, it's just, it's lazy design and it's, uh, I, I get that it's cost saving, but it makes stability issues, uh, you know, happen far too often on these figures. So uh, odd bits of articulation on these two figures, uh, particularly the way that the ankle tilt works on the Bumblebee figure. They tilt outwards, not inwards enough. So that makes it kind of difficult for standing. And just the, the overall feel of the quality of these guys, when I'm handling them, they just feel loose. And I, I'm... I'm not the biggest fan of them in their bot modes. Now, I, I think from an accuracy standpoint, they look pretty good. And, and I have to remind myself that essentially what we're dealing with here is just a two-pack of deluxe figures. So for the price point, I can't expect miracles. I can't expect masterpiece level quality and engineering on these. But I don't know. Maybe I'm a little spoiled with the Kingdom line or the, the War for Cybertron line and the Studio Series 86 because these two simply, they can't hold a candle to the Studio Series 86 and the War for Cybertron line. Uh, that being said, like I noted earlier, the vehicle accuracy is great. And chances are, that's probably how I'm going to display these guys in my collection. Because uh, if you guys are anything like me, you already have a ton of bumblebees. And it's not like I need one more. And honestly, this is my first clunker bumblebee this is my first the old camaro that we saw sam buy in the beginning of the 2007 movie this is the first one that i have in my collection so yeah i think i do want to display him in his vehicle mode and 
and I think it looks great. So for that purpose, absolutely, very happy. But just buyer beware, understand when you get these that uh, you, you're gonna have some difficulty posing. Parts may or may not fall off on your copy. And, and overall, I, I think from a, from a satisfaction figure level, I may be sitting at a five with these guys out of 10. So with that being said, you know, I'm going to wrap up the review. Uh, ultimately, do I give this a recommendation? Yes. If you don't have these figures, it's a good opportunity to get both of them in a two pack as part of that reissue. But don't feel bad if you choose not to buy them. You're not really going to be missing a whole lot, especially if you already have a bumblebee and a barricade in your collection. So anyway, that's going to end the review. As I always say, guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in. If you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, leave us some comments, let us know what you want to see, let us know what we can be doing to improve the channel. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. So uh, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for all your support. And we will see you guys in the next one. Take care.